particles like these so fast with me. Bombs out of mechanics and pipe up some cold words, but no one can deny the fact that quantum theory works. Through my only devices, were actually used pretty much from when they were invented, which would have been sort of the early 1900s, all the way up to 1960s and 70s. But their main usage came probably in the early 1900s to 1940s when your solid state devices weren't around. So before they sold solid state devices, and that's what I mean by the thermionic era, it's kind of the, when the, before the transistor and the solid state diode were invented. And the thermionic devices were used a lot in terms of, for example, for your simple phone calls and also for radio, to make radio signals, but overall the sort of complexity of, of devices was limited because the problem with the thermal devices, as we mentioned last time, is they were quite big, they were quite sort of fragile, they were quite unstable, so overall it was not the perfect device, and that's what we have to talk about in this stop point. It says, gather, process, and present secondary information to discuss our shortcomings in available communication technologies led to the increased knowledge of properties of materials with particular reference to the invention of the transistor. And so we have to talk about sort of the problems when it comes to communication technology. And what it means by communication technology is exactly things like you know, phone calls and radio, all these big examples of communication technology. How you know, sort of shortcomings in that area led to a focus on research into materials and devices that would make it easier to have more effective phone call systems and better radios, more portable radios. And that obviously led into the era of your solid state devices. So we have to make particular reference to the invention of the transistor solid state devices. Right, so let's have a look at when the transistor, the first transistor was made. That was actually in 1947. And in 1947, we had, it was basically just after World War II. World War II ended in 1945. And this was a time when we actually, we tried to make, one of the reasons why we want to have better communication technology was because radio was used a lot doing more itself. So we tried to actually make radio more portable, easy to carry. So portable means easy to carry. So we wanted to make it more easier to carry during the war itself so we could have people, soldiers, having a portable radio that they could bring as opposed to having a massive radio. Right? So we tried to actually make that invention during World War II, but we took a bit more time than expected. So we had the first transistor in 1947, and that was made up of germanium. Because remember, germanium was the first type of group 4 element that we could make very pure. Silicon took more time, it took the 1960s, 1970s for us to make silicon in a very pure form. So first we had germanium as our base for the first transistor. And what did that allow us to do? Well, transistors are, we mentioned they're much smaller, so they're much smaller than your actual thermionic devices. They're smaller and they also require less voltage, so they require less power this voltage. So I shouldn't say power, I should say voltage. Right, so these two sort of things allows us to, to make devices which were different. So for example, we had the portable radio. Right? Beforehand we had massive radios which were really not very easy to transport. Now we had portable radios which meant that we had better communication technologies. Right? That was a, an improvement when it comes to communication technologies, having portable radios for example. And also automated phone calls because in the thermal device era, we actually had these switchboards. We had one person who would operate a switchboard who would have to connect other people to different different people on different lines, right? So we had these switchboards, which when it comes to the transistor, one thing that the transistor was able to do, it was able to, for example, we mentioned it was acting like a switch. It can actually act like a switch or an amplifier. And these properties allowed it to be used to automate phone calls. We had to we didn't need a switchboard operator anymore. This was 
now automated. It was all automatic. And that was because of the transistor and its lesser cost, its um, more features. And yeah, those two would probably be the main parts. But and then smaller size as well. They allowed us to actually automate phone calls. So these are two examples of how the the invention or the need for better communication technologies, such as portable radios or automated phone calls, um, put money into research when it comes to better technology and better materials to be used for those technologies. And then that, that made the transistor come into appearance. First 1947, then we improved it later on. And also we managed to get better material for the transistors. We started with germanium, but in the 1960s we had silicon because we found a way that we could make that. And these technologies allowed us to produce, for example, portable radios, which were much better than the big chunky ones which we had beforehand, which could not be transported from place to place. And also later made later us make these automated phone calls, which didn't require a switchboard person and were a lot easier to do than your before your transistors came into existence. This is what this dot point talks about. Gather, process, and present information from secondary sources to discuss our shortcomings in available communication technologies led to an increased knowledge of properties and materials with particular reference to the invention of a transistor. And so because of the need for better communication technologies, we increased research funding and focus. So a bigger research focus meant that eventually we had devices which allowed us to make better communication technologies such as portable radios and automated phone calls. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.